ho, ho, ho. What? It says don't disturb. Why shouldn't I disturb? It's my freaking live stream. Of course I can disturb. Well, some of you might have guessed what this means. This means that we're going to review. <sighs> what is in here? Yeah. Oh, a little bit of Chanel. This is for after the live stream when I'm like exhausted. <laughs> A little sleeping mask. I'm going to put this on the door. Please do not disturb. Thank you very much. If Halloween is over. I need my beauty sleep of 364 days until next year. Yes, one day less because that last day would be Halloween again. Ooh, we're doing it. I have a bunch of samples here. Coco Mademoiselle Privé, you guys. I promised the review. And it's coming. And then I got... Okay, well, we got a lot to talk... Ooh, look at all this goodies, goodies in here. Mm. Thank you, Jack o lantern Let's get into it, you guys. <laughs> oh. Okay, so... Ooh, so much to talk about. Now... I hope the audio is a bit louder today because there have been some complaints that it was too low. <sighs> Opening up Ernie's head. Inside the brain, we have a couple of Chanel perfumes. Now, I carry my pure perfumes and the mini twists and sprays in here, but one of them is very special. Yes, I do use the inside out pouch of the Hermes Sans 15 mil are they 15? to store my Chanel's in there. Sorry, Hermes, but I love Chanel more. Uh, ah, here. It's in this pouch. Because we're going to have a little bit of a comparison as well. So here we have the pure perfume of Coco Mademoiselle. And then these fellas, let's just put them back into Ernie's head, because Ernie got no brain left. Ernie is all about the... He's all about attacking the bunker. Now he's turned into an earring. He's turned into a little pouch. And his brain is Chanel. Of course. What else? We wouldn't have it any other way, darling. Now, um, you can sleep a little. Oh, that's sad. Or who, who should sleep? Chucky? Oh, let's just put the mask here. Let's cover uh, Frederick Mal for a second. Because I do want to use Carnal Flower today, but I got to review this little fella. So I'm not spraying Carnal Flower on just yet. Um, okay. Which one did I already use for my tests? think this one so we're going to spritz coco mademoiselle privé coco mademoiselle privé uh, 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 um. ah, let's do three of them it is a light fragrance after all made for bedtime is it mm -hmm. i'll be the judge of that all right very light, in fact. Now, why am I reviewing it on Halloween? Well, because just like every other creature, including humans, on Halloween, we dress up as something. We put on an outfit. We are ourselves, but we're slightly besides ourselves. And that's exactly what uh, Chanel delivers with yet another flanker of the Coco family. It's like Coco Mademoiselle Privé is Coco Mademoiselle with a Halloween mask on. And the version of the Halloween mask that Coco Mademoiselle is putting on for Halloween is that of a pajama party. Oh, can we do the like front camera for this? This looks kind of cute, see, right? Like, uh, is this a thumbnail or what, you guys? to be seen shortly as a thumbnail in the fashion bunker for the um, Coco Mademoiselle Privé review, which will be uploaded after the live stream. Now, for those of you who uh, maybe in the future are going to watch this video thinking, what the heck, why is he dressed like that? It's because it's Halloween and I'm reviewing Coco Mademoiselle on Halloween night. And Coco Mademoiselle is Coco, dressed as Coco Mademoiselle, dressed as Coco Mademoiselle Privé, pajama party edition for Halloween. So I sprayed it on. It's very zesty, light, invigorating to a certain degree. For comparison reasons, I have the Pure Perfume and Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum Intense. We could do the top-bottom view now. Um, I don't have the Eau de Toilette here. I have the Eau de Parfum, but it is not on this uh, Ouija board right now. So quite simple here. Let me tell you where it's at. In terms of fragrances, mandarin, orange, top notes, rose, jasmine, mid notes, and white musk. 
In the bass notes released this year, perfumer behind this fragrance is Olivier Polge, the same nose as behind the Coco Mademoiselle Intense. Mm-hmm. You best believe. What is interesting to state at the back of the package we have, I did not purchase the Coco Mademoiselle Privé. I got a lot of samples, as you can see. And I guess, what does this mean? If I haven't purchased it yet, you probably know the answer to the question. Does it warrant a purchase? Mm, nah, not really. If you already have all the other ones, and my, my favorite are the Pure Perfume and um, Coco Mademoiselle Intense. So the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum are not really my preferred concentrations of this fragrance, of this flanker of cocoa. But uh, what is interesting to note here, and of course it's really hard to see this camera, I can't really focus, but I'll read it to you. Um, Yasminum Sambac or Jasmine Leaf Cell Extract, Rosa Centifoglia, Flower Extract of the Rose, and... Um, Hydrogenated castor oil, which is not an animal. It is from uh, the bean. Uh, it's the plant, actually. Kumarin is in there as well. But the biggest difference between the Coco Mademoiselle family is um, that the Coco Mademoiselle Privé does not have patchouli, allegedly, while the other concentrations or iterations of Coco Mademoiselle Privé do have the patchouli. So, smelling it now. It's uh, it's like it's lacking an element. It doesn't bite as much as it would had it had that bomb of patchouli in it. So it doesn't like really deliver. You, you mean it's soothing that rose and that white musk. I get the white musk is the only thing that delivers a bit of a reminiscence of what the patchouli used to do. So the white musk kind of gives you a little bit of that wow. But this is not a kitty that scratches. It's more like a meow rather than a meow. So it's light. Uh, and the rose and the jasmine. You know, I just watched this interview as they are as they were as Chanel was going to re-edit, re-relaunch Chanel number no. five. Uh, the ad campaign for the fragrance for uh, the holiday season, which is coming up now. So they had Olivier Polge with Marion Cotillard in I guess they have this one room that they use for filming, which looks like this super septic clean laboratory. You know, they always film in the best rooms to make it look to make everything look so effortlessly aseptic, which, you know, it's not because at the end of the day in the factories, things look quite different. But anyway, that's his room, I guess, offices slash wannabe laboratories. And then like he tells Marion Cotillard, you know, the most important fragrant in Chanel number no. five is the jasmine. And I was watching the video and I was like, ah, I beg to differ. But then shortly after he mentioned Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang is super important for Chanel number no. five to my nose, but even more so the May Rose. In the pure perfume, the May Rose is the take all, want all, be all of Chanel number no. five. The May Rose and the Ilang Ilang for me. Jasmine, meh. He said that Coco said, he said, she, she said that he said that her said that she said that Coco said that uh, when Ernest Beau was telling her about the composition of Chanel number no. five, she asked him, what's the most expensive ingredient? He said the jasmine. She said, well, then put 200 times more of it in then. She didn't say it. Well, again, that's one of the versions of the story. Another version of the story, believe what you want, is that she asked him for a list of the most precious ingredients to which he gave her a list. And then she said, enhance all of those more. I want more of those. Included in that list was Ilang Ilang. And Ilang Ilang, of course, is a bit more difficult, or back then was a bit more difficult for France to obtain rather than Jasmine because it came from much more far away in terms of the world and import of something like Ilang Ilang. But Olivier spoken at the jasmine, which he also so happily says uh, exudes in uh, abundance in Coco Mademoiselle Privé, right? The Yasminum Sambac, the jasmine leaf cell extract. So yes, it's there, and the rose is there, and the musk is there, uh, and the mandarin 
gives it that citrusy effervescence. And of course, there's there has to be, even though this is a bedtime type of fragrance that Chanel tells you you can spray on your bed sheets to go to, go to bed, despite the fact that it's a night fragrance, this one still has its aldehydes in there. That sparkling opening, because it is sparkly, almost like a very, very light rosé champagne. Um, a mandarin, as exclusive as you want to call it, we're using Latin names, the Mandarin does not deliver that effervescence, that sparkly champagne opening that Chanel fragrances are, quite frankly, very famous for. The most famous perfumes in the world for delivering that champagne opening. I call it for every, actually, Chanel perfume. And this is due to the impeccable mastery and the art masterfulness of it, of how to utilize, and Chanel was one of the first, if not the first with Chanel number five, to utilize aldehydes within perfumes. And so every Chanel perfume technically has aldehydes in the opening. And so even though not officially listed as this big part of Coco Mademoiselle Privé, I do believe that aldehydes are in here. And in fact, that bubbly effervescence of that rosé light champagne opening is Mandarin connected with aldehydes and, of course, from the bottom trickling up to the top because thanks to the bubbles of the champagne we have the white musks. It's lovely. Don't get me wrong. It's lovely. But did we need another flanker of Coco Mademoiselle? Did we need yet another flanker? Now, mm, check this out, you guys. It's my skull glass for Halloween, you guys. Mm. Oh, invigorating. Did we need another flanker? No, we did not need another flanker. Do we want another flanker? This is where it's at at the end of the day, because there's a big difference between what we want and what we have. Um, <laughs> that is true. Deco, but uh, this wig is too hot for you. You're losing your mind. What I wanted to say is there's a big difference between what you want and what you need. Did we need another flanker? No. Do we want another flanker? That's up to you. I personally didn't care for another flanker. Does Chanel need or want? I think Chanel needs. Why does Chanel need another flanker? Because they need more money. Now, whether or not this is going to sell well remains to be seen. The holiday season is upon us. Prob people will probably purchase it. The concentration of this fragrance, by the way, is listed as a... Well, they just call it Eau pour, pour la Nuit, and uh, it's a night fragrance. But... Really? They don't even list the concentration... Girl, you can't got be, gots to be kidding me. Okay, so we do not know if it's an eau de toilette or if it is an eau de parfum. But you know what? Um, maybe just the sample doesn't state it. If some of you have the full-on bottle, the 50 mil or the 100 mil, maybe those state the concentration. Unless Chanel doesn't want to state the concentration, just call it the night fragrance. Now, maybe they didn't want to state the concentration because they don't want to say that this is a cologne, a very light cologne. Because that's, at the end of the day, what it is. It's lovely. I am all for simplifying perfumes. Just like Coco was all about simplifying your outfit before you leave the house. Rather take an accessory or something off than put something extra on. However, it doesn't always work in perfumery. In this case, it works, but Coco Mademoiselle, just to be very clear, Coco Mademoiselle is a very, very, very clearly defined fragrance. Whether you love it or not, you recognize it. So there's not much you can do to tweak it, to make it like a very, very facetedly different in another iteration of it or in another flanker of it or in another concentration of it than what the original is or was. So we recognize immediately that Coco Mademoiselle L'eau privée is Coco Mademoiselle. But it's simplified. And I like that. I like the simplification. I have to also be honest, you cannot really, in my case, I, I say this, you can't really overspray uh, because it's overpowering. The uh, intense, Coco Mademoiselle intense, I mean, I use almost half a bottle. So, you know, I do like it. 
just haven't worn it in quite a bit. I love this smell. It's actually now that it's, what is it, two years old, it's becoming more medicinal and it's kind of right out of the bottle. It's it's becoming hefty. It, it's starting to smell a little bit like Chanel Cosmetics uh, and makeup on top of it. It's beautiful. I, of all of it, even more so than the Pure Perfume, I would perhaps recommend the uh, Intense. The Pure Parfum is, uh, you know, it's a bit more clean in terms of how it's blended in but how all the ingredients are blended in but it's uh it's more of a sweet chuli and you know it, it, it's more like it shoots you more like okay like now we're in the patchouli now we're in the jasmine now we're in the rose now we're in the this now we're in the that it's a very it's like switch you know it's masterfully blended but every ingredient in its own is just saying i'm here i'm here i'm here it's like you know it's like the teacher in class calling out the names of every student. Every student raises their hand in the classroom to say that they're there. That's how this one works. So it's like little soldiers in a, in a bottle. It's like soldiers in a bottle. Here, uh, it's more complex. It's the most complex version of Coco Mademoiselle is the Eau de Parfum Intense. It's very, very beautiful and very, very decadent. This is the most decadent concentration of the Coco Mademoiselle family. I highly recommend this one. And here, it's like saying, well, maybe this one you can't overspray it in the morning when you go out, but this one you just drop, throw it in your purse and just keep spraying it on and on and on throughout the day, more so than their advertisement, just advertising it for the night, saying like, hey, Please do not disturb. Spray my bed sheets with it. You can literally spray anything with it. That It's that light. This brings me to the point that it doesn't last very long on the skin. It has its... We're going to see how it goes throughout this video because the live stream is going to be more than just the review of Coco Mademoiselle Privé. But um, I can tell you already now, it's fading. It's fading beautifully. But because it's lacking that patchouli, and patchouli is an ingredient that it has heft. It's a moist, oily concoction that it has little claws, little tiny gremlin or ghoulies or critter claws. And it kind of harpoons itself to whatever, wherever you spray it onto. The Coco Mademoiselle version of patchouli, at least. And it sticks. Now, being that we're lacking the patchouli in Coco Mademoiselle Privé, uh, l'eau privé, what you gonna do? What's there to harpoon itself to you? Not much, really. The white musk? Hmm. It's delicate. Now that we're living in a society where smoking has become practically legal, so you're not going to bars that are oversmoked, you're not going to clubs that are oversmoked. If you were to do that, you would need the pure perfume of Coco Mademoiselle or the Eau de, Eau de Parfum Intense because you would need a perfume that can combat and unify with the tobacco and the smoke of the room. And don't forget, this is a very important element to why a lot of perfumes used to be in the past much more strong than they are today. Our society has changed a lot. When opium came out by Yves Saint Laurent in the late 70s, the disco era, uh, everybody was smoking. You could even smoke in airplanes. There was smoke everywhere. You could smoke in the shops. It, it, you could smoke in the doctor's office, in the waiting room. I mean, it's like that's how insane it was. And, and uh, perfumes needed to be as strong to combat that. And it was totally normal. Nobody complained about smoke back then. Of course, it became an issue. And now... I'm glad that it's gone because it's really disgusting to have to wash your clothes everything because everything smells of it. Now, I guess back in the day, if everything smelled of smoke, nothing smelled of smoke because you didn't notice the difference of entering a smoky bar, coming out and stinking of it because everything, the whole world was smelling of smoke back then. So perfumes needed to be made accordingly so that they could battle their way within that environment and work with what was given to them. And that was the element of smoke, really big element, very often... Uh, forgotten when analyzing fragrances today when we when we say oh perfumes today are not as strong well perfumes today got nothing much to fight against except the smell of sweat in case you don't wash but if you don't wash chances are you don't use perfume either so um perfumes are mostly made for you know being pleasant easy to wear in office environments so you don't offend anybody and you don't need a strong perfume because there's nothing strong to combat it pity now that's why Coco Mademoiselle <coughs> L'eau Privé, more than for the bed, <coughs> sorry guys, more than for the bedtime, it's an office, it's the office version of Coco Mademoiselle Privé. In fact, instead of calling it Do Not Disturb, 
with a sleeping mask, they should have just said uh, work in progress or in the office. <laughs> the office girl, working girl, Coco Mademoiselle, the working girl. Uh, unless please do not disturb is a joke, which would have been genius, but Chanel marketing, they're just not that clever, I'm afraid. Uh, what would have been genius were that the please do not disturb is the world surrounding us perfumistas and perfume heads or fume heads or whatever other cringy name you want to give us. And the rest of the world is like telling us, please do not disturb. Please do not disturb. You know, I don't want you to smell of any perfume. Please do not disturb me with your perfume. And then so Chanel comes out with Coco Mademoiselle Privé and says like, yeah, let's make a joke about it. Please do not disturb. Okay, fine. Wear this and you won't disturb anybody. I mean, that would have been at least a bit better of a marketing strategy than making the boring cliche version of the wear it to bed in the bed sheets. You're clean, washed, wonderful, comfy bed sheets. It's so nice. Life is beautiful. Have a good night. Life sucks. Okay. Especially 2020. And we got to struggle to survive. Last thing I need is a brand to sell me this idyllic version of life where everything is great. Chanel used to do that in a different way, not by promoting a sort of a concoction for like, oh, it's easy to go to bed with this. It's super relaxing. No, the dream was not so obvious. Chanel always delivered effortless elegance and chic through a clean, sober aesthetic in lines and trim and cut and concept. No need for all of this extra explanation. Chanel number 22, for example, is the most effortless of Chanel fragrances together with Pour Monsieur, I would say, because it's just so, you know, it's forever. It's for every occasion. It's, it's, it's light, but it has character. It stays on you for a long time, despite it not intruding other people's space too much. It says I'm here, but it doesn't slap you in the face. I mean, it, it's really, it, it, that is the effortless Chanel chic. And that that's when a perfume does its own marketing, really. In this case, this is a brand making marketing, tweaking a perfume to fit a concept that they're trying to forcefully give us in 2020, when nothing is easy, where going to bed is sometimes also depressing, where if you're on lockdown for a long period of time, I mean... Sure, some people are really, really very specific about cleaning bed sheets once a day, every two days, every three, every two. But a lot of people just sleep in the same bed sheets for a longer period of time, and that's fine too. Your skin actually should not be always exposed to chemicals and washing and washing. You need it to rest. You need to give your skin a rest. Um, and this whole concept of comfort and satin, silk, Egyptian cotton bed sheets, and this. This is not the concept of luxury that really should be luxury. It's it's kind of a given type of luxury. It's, it's a cliche of luxury. I think luxury is something more spiritual nowadays. I think today, in 2020, we can officially say, finally say that the true luxury is, is literally giving yourself time to spend time with yourself. And so in that respect... I think it's way more luxurious if you create your own bubble around you when you wear perfume out and about and, and you create your own cocoon where you are free to be who you are and that perfume pr protects you from the rest of the world. That's how I see it, at least. That's how I wear my perfumes out and about. I wear them for me, not for anybody else. So I don't wear perfume hoping that it won't offend somebody. I wear perfume because it invigorates me. I don't wear it for you, I wear it for me. So this whole concept of toning it down for the sake of political correctness, mm -mm, toning down a perfume for the sake of political no. No, I ain't having it. And also, out of that reason, I won't be purchasing this Coco Mademoiselle Privé. Because what? You're selling me a fragrance for me, for my own private sphere? Then give me a bomb. 
Show me that at least, at least at home, when I'm within my four walls, I can have a jolly good time, that I could go bananas, that I could dream up worlds that would never be possible when I go outdoors because outdoor society doesn't let me dream about wonderful, beautiful things. Society is just ready to slap me in the face the second I get out of the house. So at least the freaking perfume, if you're going to deliver a freaking flanker in 2020 of a perfume that you've been already churning out like up nauseam, at least deliver something that can make me feel like I, I am worth a million bucks. I am that special me that when I am in my own cocoon at home, I feel freaking incredible. Like I'm soaring through the skies and I keep dreaming and dreaming. No, instead you deliver a very expensive watered down flanker, calling it light, very light bed sheets. Oh, what? So now I can't even be offensive in my own home. By offensive, I mean you can't be offensive in uh, the office space because your perfume is too strong. So now even at home, now we're bringing that concept, that mental concept, marketing is bringing that concept inside your four walls now. Now the marketing is telling you even at home, you best tone it down a bit. It's more elegant that way. Boo, I'll be the judge of that. Don't you dare come into my home and tell me how I should play it in my home. I played in my home how I see fit. So this perfume ain't fit for my 2020. Last sniff. It's lovely. But lovely don't cut it in this day and age. I need more than lovely. I need more than precious. I need character. I need a story. I need a dream. I need a very clear, precise vision. I don't need to tone it down. That's the last thing I need in 2020. Well, thank you for watching this review of Coco Mademoiselle Privé. Oh, before I end it, I do recommend one thing, though. If you don't want to spend yo bucks on a big bottle, 100 ml, they even have a 200 ml now, 200 ml spray of Coco Mademoiselle Privé. Um, sorry, not Privé, Eau de Parfum Intense. I've just purchased the minis, the mini twist and sprays, the three times seven ml of the Eau de Parfum Intense. This I highly recommend. I haven't opened, ah, but you can see it here. This is how tiny it is. So one uh, seven mil spray is already in it and you got two refills, each on left and the right side of this package. This I highly recommend, super cute. I have the number five. So it's, it's exactly the same, just the white, the pearlescent kind of pearly white and, um, and the gold trim on the sides. And Chanel number five, Eau de Parfum is black with gold on the side. So this little fella lacquered metal, very, very reminiscent of what Chanel would have done in the 30s with this kind of twist and spray. This is gorgeous, just from the packaging. Yes, of course you're paying tons for the ratio milliliter per, you know, milliliter per dollar or euro or whatever you're paying in, but it's, it's a little masterpiece of artistry. These beautiful metallic containers and even the sprayer on top is metal. The glass is glass, but then inside, of course, it's plastic because you want it to have a little soft interior so that you don't um, break the glass inside. And just to the touch, this lacquered, beautiful, gorgeous Chanel colorways. This, this to me, is what Coco... This is advancing a concept that Coco already developed uh, in the 20s and 30s. For those of you who don't know, you could follow my Coco Ch uh, Chanel Privé all spelled together Instagram profile where you can see everything that Chanel has made and designed during her lifetime, uh, all, all up until 1971 when she passed away. And you can see, I've been posting some photos from an exhibition that's going on in Paris right now. You can see a lot of um, bottles of cosmetics, makeup and perfumes from the 20s and 30s of Coco Chanel. And some of them are very similar to this concept. So the Chanel packaging team and, and bottle design team. They're really doing a great job in advancing further and bringing that concept that she already, like a pioneer, introduced in the 20s and 30s and bringing that into the new millennia, the new century. This is definitely, this looks like it came out of a 30s Chanel catalog, but updated for 2020. I know it came out in 2019, but uh, they're bringing out newer ones. This is the new one, the newest release. So up until now, they have released the Eau de Parfum number no. 5, um, number five, low in mini twist spray. I got that one as well. And they have released the third one, which is Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum Intense. This I highly recommend. This is pure Chanel aesthetic legacy brought in the, 
in, in 20 into 2020 and the fragrance is bomb and because it's so bomb you don't need so much of it so the top the smaller little thing to put into your spray looks like a lipstick it's just adorable just protect it because this is lacquered metal it can get scratched easily so i keep it in these pouches that are covered with cotton and super soft and then i separate each bottle and so it's like laying in its own little bed of cottoniness of cottoniness and of course ernie ain't gonna attack the fashion bunker no mo he tried it he lost all right, top camera for one last view. So you guys, I would like to thank you so much for watching the review of Coco Chanel, uh, Coco Mademoiselle L'Eau Privée. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have purchased the perfume. If so, why? And why do you love it? And if you haven't purchased it, why haven't you purchased it? Also, I would like to know who has Coco Mademoiselle already and added the Privé on top or decided because they already have like me most of the editions of Coco Mademoiselle have decided to finally stop with all the flankers and say like you know what no I draw the line at Coco Mademoiselle Privé I'm not getting this one so let me know I would love to know that in the comment section down below thank you so much for watching um subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you haven't already I'm also on Instagram Facebook Twitter super dick all spelled together thank you so much to my patrons for supporting the channel Without you, nothing would be possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to my patrons. On Patreon, you get to see a lot of videos uh, that are only available to Patreon, the whole archive of them, and not on YouTube. And then all the videos, well, most of the videos, not with the live streams, it's a bit different, but with the pre-recorded videos, they always hit Patreon first and they're ad-free on Patreon while uh, then they come to YouTube later and they have a lot of ads running through on YouTube. So... Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.